In this video, we'll look at how we can create a bar chart or a column chart from uh, some of the data that we have. We'll look at uh, the top billboard artists over the last several decades and the number of number one singles that they've had. So pretty easy to do this. We can actually just insert a chart and under our series, we'll go ahead and select uh, chart toppers. And you can see here, it's gonna tell us the number one singles, but we also probably want labels here. So we'll go ahead and select this column A. And now you can see we've got this nice little chart here of uh, all of the number one singles. And we can click this and move it around, you know, so we can kind of push that to where we like it. Uh, and you can see we get these nice labels. We get, you know, we can identify and very easily look at, you know, what the how these all compare. So you can see we have the Beatles, we have Elvis Presley. It looks like uh, Mariah Carey's got quite a few here, 18. Um, so we can we can easily create this uh, this this little chart here uh, as a column chart. So not very difficult to kind of to show that data here, and it's a pretty basic layout. Now column charts are really good because it allows us to compare very easily. If we look at this, it's pretty obvious who's got the most, and it's pretty obvious how everybody else stacks up. Uh, Interesting, Elvis Presley, I think, had a few that had that didn't quite make the billboard because it was before the billboard charts. Uh, but you can see here, you know, kind of compare and see who's got equivalent. So if I look at this, I can easily see that Stevie Wonder and Janet Jackson have the same number of number one singles. Uh, so pretty easy to do that. We can also change that over to a bar chart. We can just click bar chart. And you can see here, again, very similar. Maybe we want to move our legend. So we can customize, click our legend, and maybe we want to put that you know at the top uh, so now we can see very similarly just now our data is laid out horizontally instead of vertically but you can see how this kind of tracks and how this compares so pretty easy to create a basic column or bar chart especially if you know how to how to do it from our uh, from our previous videos on creating line and area charts a um, little bit simpler but we can also use this video to kind of look at some of the other options we might have for legends or for some of these other uh, customizations so our chart style we might even want to put in something like a, a lighter gray or maybe since this is blue we can take a, a compliment you know maybe we want to make it like I don't know New York Knicks we can make it uh, orange and blue here um, we can also add in an option for three dimensions so it actually kind of makes it a little bit harder to to kind of figure out exactly how much data is there um, some people who are really into visualization don't like three-dimensional charts because they can kind of look at you know they can kind of make your data a little distorted um, we can also maximize so instead of putting the uh, the labels to the left we can actually put the label or put the values right into the labels now with the blue and the orange that's not really a great layout here if we change this back to a, a none uh, it looks a little bit better, a little bit easier to read, but you know this this layout can actually help you to see uh, see your data. Let's go ahead and maximize that again. See your values right in your data. So you're kind of add, adding your label and using the most uh, possible space here. Let's go ahead and give this a different background color so we don't blend in with the the actual sheets background. Um, maybe now that we've done this, maybe it does make more sense to move our our, our legend around a little bit. Maybe on the bottom would look a little bit better. Uh, or maybe no legend at all if we just put this legend if we inserted this somewhere else and put a title on it um, we can also change the axis titles so we can say you know we don't have a chart subtitle or anything here but we could you know give the chart a different title since we've taken the axis away and we're in maximize we're not seeing that uh, but if we were to add our legend back in we might see how that changes a little bit but here, you know, we're not we're not dealing. You know, we can add a chart subtitle. So this is my subtitle, and you can see how that's kind of coming up at the top. But oh, it's kind of ugly because we've pushed this down further now. So we're going to go back to chart title. We'll just leave that alone for now. Take that subtitle out. We'll go ahead and just remove that. Go right back up to the chart title. Uh, our different series, you know, we can change the color for this. You know, if we want to have this maybe not in blue, maybe we want to use green. We can change that to green. Uh, we don't really, really need the error bars, but we can use the data labels, uh, the error bars. You know, it's not really very useful for this information, but uh, for our data labels, this is going to identify exactly how many there are. So that's kind of useful because it just kind of adds some, uh, some easier tracking to this. And, you know, we can make this... Uh, Let's go ahead and uncheck that error bars. We could change the fonts for these two. Maybe we want something that looks a little bit more, uh, you know, data-y. 
let's go ahead and make those bold. Uh, we've already moved our legend around, but we can change the fonts and the formatting there. Uh, we can also modify this, so you know we don't necessarily want to use a log logarithmic scale here, uh, but we can also change the scale, which probably isn't super useful here. Um, we can change the minimum and maximum values. So maybe we want to make the minimum 5 and the maximum 25, kind of move our data around so you can see we're starting off at 10. Um, this kind of changes the way that the bars look a little bit. So sometimes you don't want to mess with your minimum and maximum values because if you look at this, you can see, well, this bar looks three times larger than this bar, but even though it's only two times larger. So you can kind of look at that and see how it's very easy to manipulate charts so that they give a, a false impression. So if we just go ahead and delete those, it's going to automatically scale that. And you can see that's a little bit more, just feels a little bit more correct. You know, it feels a little bit more accurate for what we're looking at. Um, and we can go into grid lines. And we right now have uh, automatic grid lines, but maybe we want to change that. So we're looking at a line every four or, you know, every, maybe we want to add some minor grid lines as well. You know, we can kind of modify this. You know, maybe we want five so we can look at what each or four we always want to change that so the four divisions kind of give us an individual number for each one of these and we can change these colors a little bit you know we can make those purple or you know, maybe we just well, that's kind of that doesn't that's not great so there we go make that auto uh, but you know you can customize these charts quite a bit as well so you can kind of make them as, as informative and uh, as as colorful as you like so pretty easy to kind of work with these charts and even though bar gra or bar graphs and bar charts and column charts are are pretty simple to set up you can see how you can kind of add a lot more to them to make them a little bit more visually interesting or appealing thanks for watching on our next video we'll get into uh, some pie charts and take a look at how we can kind of work with those